Okay, so I'm going to be making a handle and some feet. The handle will be hollow in the thickest portion of it, and the feet will also be hollow. So I have two pieces of clay. Here is the clay for the handle. I'm probably going to have some extra, and this is for the feet. So ideally, let me adjust the camera a little bit. You guys can see better. So ideally, um, when you're making feet, uh, three feet on a teapot balance better than four. Um, a tripod, right, works better than a four-legged stool. So I'm going to take four, three pieces of clay, and I'm going to try to make them of equal volume. And the best way to do that is to just pinch some off and put them into balls. And we're just going to guesstimate here and try to get close to volume. And in doing this, start off with a ball and it'll be easy to roll out and also easy to guesstimate size. Those are pretty close. I'm going to need just a little bit more clay here. Um, and ideally it's better to take it off in one piece than to have multiple pieces. All right. So that's kind of large. Take some off. And make them round and put them side by side and see. Oh, that's much bigger, right? So take some off. And it's always good if you want to have a spare, okay? You need three legs to make four. Those are pretty close. I'll put them in a line and I'll take this scrap. Okay. Always good to have a spare. Why not? Well, let's see, and that is kind of big, take some off. Taking the time to do this makes it easier in the long run, okay? So, yeah, there we go. So now, to do the feet, what I'm gonna do, just like I did the spout, I'm gonna have my pinky touching the table and my thumb and index finger are gonna be in the air and I'm gonna make a taper or carrot shape. Okay. And again, these are going to be feet. I don't want them super pointed. And any excess material, I'm going to cut off on the thick end. Okay. So I'm just checking and making sure that I don't get any creases. Okay. Like that. All right. So there's one. You always want to do each step for each piece before you move on to the next step. And then we can compare. And if we need to make adjustments, we will before we move on to the next step. So get them all the same size. Roll them to the same shape. That's comparable. Try again. And again, any excess clay, we're gonna be taken up to the top. Just try to be consistent with your technique and practicing and experimenting, you know. You're only committed as to when you start to add these components to your teapot. And then again, you can also change your mind. It's a little bit thinner and in our spare. Okay. So now, I got a little bit of a dipple here. I'm going to fix that. Okay, now obviously these are going to be feet and they're thicker than my thumb. So what I need to do is I need to hollow them out. And um, if you watch my video on doing my animals and the legs, we can do that with a simple modeling stick. I don't need them hollow all the way to the end, but hollowing them will take out some of the weight and make the teapot lighter. So I use this as a depth gauge and I'm gonna leave about a thumb's width at the very end and just hold it right there. And I'm gonna put this in the center and push it up to where my gauge was, my index finger. 
I'm just going to hollow these out a little bit. And in doing this, you know, we're going to lighten it a little bit. And also, it will ensure it won't blow up. We have a hollow space. Uh, no trapped air. All we have to do is make sure we have an air hole. So there's one foot. So I'm going to do that to the remainder of them. There's another dimple. Let me fill this in. You get that folding when you're doing coils, and if you don't take care of it, it can really work its way through the entire coil. Right. So, just trying to thin out the walls a little bit. And in doing this, it might go a little off round, but then we can come back and then reshape them. I'm going to let these sit while I make my handle and blow dry them as necessary. If I leave them for a while, they'll start to dry out and firm up. So another one, take a gauge measurement. There we go. Just gently press, even pressure, so you don't make it go oblong too much. Reshape. These are gonna be the legs. Again, you do each step for all of your pieces before you move on to the next step. And you're always comparing to make sure they're similar <clears throat> and make adjustments before you go on to the next step. The most difficult thing would be to make one completely and then try to do the same thing all over again. You won't have the ability to compare at each of those steps. I'm gonna put these off to the side for now. Matter of fact, I think, I'm going to put them on a bat, make them, I can move them around easier. Four legs, I'm only going to be using three of them. So now I'm going to create the handle, and I'm going to do a handle that is going to be thick in the center and thin on the edges. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to carrot shape each end. And I already have folding, you see that take place? That's important. I mean, if anything, look at that. I already have folding right there, so if I don't pinch the clay off and get rid of that, that fold will work its way completely through my handle. So I'm going to taper this end, and then I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to taper this end. You can get it started. Roll it to a point, okay, and then begin to taper. And again, there's that folding taking place. You want to smear it down or pinch or cut it off either way. Okay. Once I get it to a point, it should stop the folding to this edge. Okay, so now I'm going to do this simultaneously. The center, I want to get it to a certain thickness. It's going to have a lot of volume, but then it's going to thin out. Think of um, like a uh, lady's handbag handle, kind of a stylized handle like that. So I'm going to try here. And it's already going oblong. You can see my clay is cracking a little bit. A damp sponge. That cracking can... Um, keep getting worse and worse so don't get a sopping wet sponge but a damp sponge and just burnish so the clay is drying out it has a it's developed a skin and go ahead and just do that okay so now we're going to start to roll this and again the thickest part of my handle is going to be in the center and it's going to taper in uh, each end yeah I don't like that some of this down. When you're making a handle, you're going to want to achieve your thickness and your shape and blow dry it before you actually hollow it out. So um, we'll have another bat for that. You can see how I'm going to create the end. Ends are going to be thinner and the center will be thicker. 
just trying to get the tapering uniform on both ends. This is just one handle. You can numerous. You could make your handle just like you made the spout um, in my spout video. And I kind of like that. It's maybe go just a little bit thinner. And I'm trying to make it round. It's starting to flatten on me. Same on this end. Yeah. Okay, so now I'm going to transfer to a bat. <clears throat> And this is important too. Using a bat will um, give, you, give you the ability to move your handle around while you're blow drying. Let's move this forward. So here's my handle. And I'm going to have a high arc. So this is, I'm designing my handle how it's going to look right now. Okay, and I'm going to flatten it just a little bit so it's more ovate, oval in shape. Take that thin part off, and I'm going to have a nice high handle, and I'm going to have like a little curly cue going on here. I'm going to bring, this is a little, uh-oh, let me just thin this out just a little bit, more of a point. One end is drying out more than the other. So I'm going to bring this up, and I'm really focusing on symmetry. And I need to turn it my way to do that. Yeah, I need more water. Leaving the clay out depends on um, the humidity level. Uh, if you're in a room where the heater's on and there's very low humidity, things can dry out rather quickly. I'll just get this balanced. So I think I got my shape the way I'm going to want it. And this is the teapot body that I'm going to use. And so it's probably going to come in contact with the spout and then off to the back of the teapot. This will be a handle that goes over the top of the teapot. So now I'm going to blow dry this. And this is going to take a few minutes. I'd say three or so, three to five minutes. So bear with me. I don't have um, editing capabilities on my video yet. So here we go. Uh, it just really got rough looking here. Before I, I'm gonna get it wet and smooth. Put this over here. I'm gonna get it wet and smooth before I start blow drying. I'm going to do this side first. When, I'm, when it gets firm enough that I flip it over, I'll smooth the other side. And I'm going to have some other detail work to do on it. Okay, now we'll dry.
This is starting to firm up pretty quickly. I'm going to deal with these cracks before I proceed. It needs more water. I've got to smooth these cracks out before I dry it too much. Okay. A sponge is a good burnishing and smoothing the surface tool. Um, you know, if you got one with your toolkit, this is a little bit finer, uh, how would I say, particle size or opening size, and um, can do a better job burnishing and polishing the clay. But again, I left these pieces out for probably 30 minutes um, while I was doing something else and forgot about them, and that was just enough to develop a skin on them. I'm going to bring that in a little bit. So I'm ready to do the other side now. Okay, so let's do a check. And what we want to be able to do is to pick this handle up and it hold its shape. So that's just what we want. So I'm going to be real careful. Now, if it's thicker than the width of my thumb, right, it needs to be hollow. So I would say from about here to here, we need to hollow this. And like in the teapot spout I demonstrated, I started from the end of the spout that's going to be pouring liquid all the way to the back end. This the concept here is we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to start about here and we're going to cut in half and then pull back out. We'll hollow this portion, thick portion of the handle, and then um, we'll put it back together. So here I am. I'm going to dive in and I'm going to try to maintain about the center of the handle. Okay. And then I'm going to pull out right about there. Excellent. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to flip this over. There. There's our handle. Now we're going to hollow this portion out. So again, using the modeling stick, I'm going to firm this up a little bit. My clay is so soft. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to score. Wow. If you can hear the pounding on the roof, that is hail. It is coming down really hard right now. I'm probably going to have a coating of hail on the ground in a couple of minutes. So I'm just going to score. And again, leave yourself about a quarter of an inch, okay? Leave yourself about a quarter of an inch that you're going to use for wall thickness. And I'm going to score in farther than a quarter of an inch from the edge. I'm going to be hollowing that out, okay? And we're going to score in the same direction on each piece. It's better just to follow the linear contours and just score. And every now and then I'm dipping with water. 
Okay. Now do this edge here. Again, this is something that is very simple to do. It takes time, but shortcutting this technique will probably guarantee that your piece will crack or fall apart. So it's better just to take your time. It doesn't take any great skill, it just takes time. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna take the triangle edge of my wire loop tool and I'm gonna make a groove to hollow out the fat portion of the handle. Okay, just one side, and then do the other. And again, leave yourself at least a quarter of an inch thickness, if not more, okay? Good. Now, like I did my spout, I'm gonna take the round edge, and I'm gonna just keep it in line and slowly turn it to get to that desired quarter of an inch thickness on one side and then do the same thing on the other again removing all this excess clay is going to lighten up your teapot um, it'll make it more functional won't be so heavy you'd be more inclined to use it but teapots again don't have to be used they can just be enjoyed for their beauty Okay. There. Now, I'm gonna hit it again. I've just carved into some really soft clay. My clay is really soft. I'm gonna just dry it, dry it on the inside first. I'm going to spot water right where I need it, right where I scored. I don't need to smooth the inside. No liquid is going to be inside that handle. Um, but the edges need to be re-moistened so we'll get a good bond. And this is just slightly different than the spout that we weren't able to divide it completely in half and put it back together. We're just going to line this up as best we can and put it back on. Okay. There. I'm just going to wiggle it back and forth and just get it to bond a little bit. Okay. And then the seam, you can see the seam on the edge. Um, you can just take, I'll stand this up. I'm just gonna take my two index finger and thumb and try to bring those together. And kind of re-weld it back together. Okay. And then the inside, inside seam, oh, we're starting to get, it's, like I said, my clay is soft, so I could have blow dried this a little bit more and made it a little bit more firm uh, so it wouldn't move on me, but you get the idea. Now, I like to use the modeling stick and I'm gonna burnish that seam. That will help bond it. And again, I need to spot some water right where I need it, right where that seam is. So I can work the stick. Yeah. 
And once you have air trapped in there, um, it's going to hold its shape. But the next step we have to do is we will dry it and get it a little bit firmer. And then we have to make air holes in it. And I'm going to use my needle tool to make small air holes on the underside of the handle so air can escape. Again, if air cannot escape, it will blow up. And if you forget to put air holes after you've hollowed your handle, when we fire it, your handle will blow up. And that'll be too bad. So I'm going to reshape. Yeah, there's my handle. And it's hollow, lighter. I'm going to blow dry it again. Hang on. Okay, it needs to sit a little bit more, but I want to show you what I'm going to do here. And I'm going to go slightly off seam. I'm going to just make a couple of holes that air can escape. And when I, after I get done glazing this, this air holes will be sealed up and it'll, it'll be no big deal. So you can see I made three little air holes in that hollow portion of the handle. Whenever you use a needle tool to make an air hole, put it in, and then just gently wiggle it. It seems like that's gonna be a big hole, but as it shrinks, as it shrinks and, you know, it'll be fine. After the bisque firing, when we glaze it, it'll be no big deal, you won't even see them. So there's the handle. Now, what I'm gonna do, I have my feet. In the next video, I'm gonna be assembling all of these components for my teapot. Um, but I have my feet, and what you want to do is dry them too. Okay? And you can dry the inside a little bit. Okay, you get the idea. So you want your feet firm as well. So I'm going to just let this sit out for a few minutes. And when I come back, I'm going to reassemble this teapot. Spout, handle, feet, and I'm also going to make a decorative knob for the top. So that's in the next video. This is the end of handles and feet video.